was uh, in a little band in New York and liked the kind of small club scene that was going on in Brooklyn at the time. I was in the TV business uh, in the 90s until I opened up this and it was either move to LA and pursue writing or do something totally different and my experience in a band was so much fun that I was like, wow, this place is available, it used to be a cool punk club, why don't we just give it a shot? You know, we had very little money to set it up so my family and friends came and helped paint and hang up decorations. We bought it in early November and opened November 20th, so maybe a three, three week turnaround from kind of cleaning it up to getting it started. I'd pretty much thrown myself into the Denver scene by the time the high dive opened in 2003. And that was a real interesting point for Denver, like a real turning point culturally. You know, there were great punk bands, Planes Mistaken for Stars and all these incredible bands, but there was also like what came to be known as a gothic country sound with 16 horsepower and Slim Cessna's Auto Club. But, you know, it didn't really have a sound. It, the scene, as it was thought of, I think, it was like, who's from Denver? Fucking Big Head Todd and the Monsters. We had a really good indie scene, but it hadn't really codified. And a lot of really interesting stuff started happening. And the high dive just jumped right into that, jumped into that sort of stream of, of culture that was happening. I remember before it even opened and walking into High Dive for the first time and being like, oh yeah, this is gonna be cool. The Colorado music community, these indie musicians, we were kind of lacking a place where we could connect to and all hang out at. Our very first night being open, the, it still smelled like paint, but Yeah Yeah Yeahs were playing down the street at their Fever to Tell album, and I got in, a, in touch with them through email and asked if they could come and spin records after the show. It was an all-ages show, so it ended relatively early. And then I think around 11.30, or so Karen O runs in. And then all these people from the venue start coming. We didn't have a door guy, but they start playing music and it was packed. And um, the app, at two in the morning when we had to kick everyone out, the toilet was broken and there were like cigarette butts everywhere. And I was like, ah, oh, this place just might work. Might be all right. <laughs> I just remember that there was a lot of local bands playing really cool music, the kind of stuff that I wanted to do. And they all seemed to know each other. And it was just like, you could tell that something was happening. So I was playing in a band uh, based out of Boulder when the high dive opened, and I think we played one of the first handful of shows here. We drove up from Boulder. We couldn't find the high dive at all because it was. It, we kept driving right past it. Uh, we played the show, and it was very clear that it was just this really cool haunt that had a lot of character and that something was happening. I mean, you really could feel like a, a buzz in the air. And I remember getting the phone call asking me if I wanted to come down and talk about uh, working at high dive. And I remember like hanging the phone up in my front yard and being like, oh my God, like this is crazy. I'm gonna work at the high dive. This is like the coolest place on earth. I'll be there whenever you need me. Let's do it. I don't even care how much you pay me. Like I'm, I'm in. So it was when I first came, from the first time I came here and I came to see Plants for Sake for Stars. I'd just moved to town probably two weeks before. And it was a party. It was, it was everything I was looking for in moving to a bigger city. And, uh, and trying to find these experiences that kept me here for as long. You know, this is going to be just a little stop on my, on my life journey, and it's my home now. And the Hyde I played a big part of that. It's a very friendly and welcoming scene. Or at least I hope people feel that way about it. I think that everybody tries to promote each other, look out for each other, not only in the, the, the high dive scene, but just all around, all around Denver. An opportunity came when they were gonna sell the bar and there was a lot of chatter about who they were gonna sell the bar to. We really felt like it was important to make sure that the high dive stayed independent. He ended up selling to me and, and a number of employees or ex-employees and it really pissed a lot of people off because it was really a hot commodity. People wanted it for the name, and it was just really important for us to keep it independent. It came to be known as, you know, the venue, and then other ones sort of came alongside, you know, the Irish Rover and uh, Three Kings and whatever, but I mean, the high dive predated all of that. It's got its own unique feel today, but it's still got a grungy feel that, that we had when we first opened. Matt LaBarge is sort of my mentor. Uh, not just in the bar or music venue business, but just in life. I mean, he's just such a cool guy. and He has such a vision and 
to be taken under his wing and sort of have him trust me to with the legacy that he created was like a pretty big deal to me and it still is every day It's just kind of like a sweaty crowd full of people covered in beer having the time of their lives kind of thing. That's how I would describe the high dive. Like it's definitely my favorite venue to play in town. Um, the show I ever saw in Denver was right here. Elaborate. Yeah, I mean it was Ned Garth Explosion. Really? Oh yeah. That was the first show you ever saw here? Yeah, right here. I mean it's always been kind of like dirty. It's a dive bar and I think a lot of people come in and there's been nights where there's just like a smell that I think a lot of people found comforting. Um, so yeah, just dirty and <laughs> fun. It's a place for everybody and uh, I think the staff and uh, everybody that hangs out here tries to make everybody feel welcome. This is Denver. This is Denver's independent music scene. This is Denver's independent promotion scene. This is the creative scene. You go into the high dive and for me, I'm always seeing somebody that I know, an interesting creative person that I'm able to catch up with on their music project or maybe they'll be on stage. High dive is always at the forefront of like creating this community where people feel welcome. The sense of community in and around this place is, you know, kind of what what led me to do something like this is to just have that place where weirdos can go and be weird and you know you don't care about you know whatever anyone's doing on the outside and everybody's cool here because everybody's weird and there's no you know real judgment being passed. I remember the first time that we were a couple coming to the high dive. I was working in Boulder at the time. I was leaving this really long shift. I was like, there's no way I'm going to this metal fest. Like, I'm so over this, I'm so tired. But I was like, you know, falling in love with this dude, so I had to come to this metal fest. And I get here, and the cloud of cigarette smoke outside of the high dive was like across the street. And I can see he Maddie down the, down the line at the other end of the bar, and he's like, Mar, the basement. And I'm like, why? He's like, the green room. And I'm like, what is going on? So I walk down to the green room, and it's just like this line of people just trying to push themselves so hard down into the green room because a band is wailing so hard with every single person in that crowd, just like feeling it. And I, I remember sitting there and my jaw was on the ground and I was like feeling these like crazy tingles, which I'm actually getting now. And I was like, dude, this is home. We played a release show here <laughs> and my mom came. Well, yeah, yes. I was going to say. My mom hasn't come to see me since. It's been like 12 years. She hasn't seen me play music since. I think she questioned all of my life oh, choices. Yeah. It en encompasses like being a rock and roll dive bar, but these guys put so much care and yeah. like thought into everything they do. It's not just a dive bar. It just feels like home. I was comfortable here the moment I walked in, but I was even more comfortable after I spent time here. There's breakups too, but there are a lot of uh, stories of people meeting here. There have actually been weddings and wedding parties at the High Dive. High Dive has always been a place of firsts and lasts for people and everything in between. People wanting to celebrate milestones because this venue has been so important for so many people. I think what's neat is that you get so many people passing through. So if it's a touring band, you, it kind of connects you to other cities. So it's not only like part of the Denver community, it, it bridges the music scene in other places too. Denver grew faster than we could ever imagine it to have done, partially because of weed, 
But a big part of it was because, honestly, um, a lot of people had been working really hard to kind of get to where we were at. I think the high dive kind of, in some ways, shifted this neighborhood into more mm -hmm. of an, uh, an art center mm -hmm. um, and community center for a lot of musicians and artists. And I think it changed the neighborhood, like drew more restaurants and drew mm -hmm. more art galleries and different things. So I feel like it's been sort of an epicenter for this community. Holy Since the pandemic, I really feel like, you know, when you're lost in the grind of work and you're lost in the grind of just the daily business of running a music venue, putting shows on, putting events on, you know, five, six days a week sometimes, seven days a week sometimes, you can sort of get lost in that. We all have a renewed vigor for the scene, the community. Everybody wants to go see a show. Everybody wants to play a show. Everybody just wants to have that experience that social experience, that interaction. People have met their partners here, they've been inspired to start bands here, they've had great nights here, they've had really bad nights here. People from all over the world have photo booth strips from the high dive at their house commemorating a memory. And I think that personally, I kind of got lost in like just the day-to-day -day grind of it and I have like a renewed appreciation and love for, for this place because it does mean so much to so many people and I really want to honor the spirit of the community and of the people that care so much about this place that they'll like do anything to help keep us in business. There's like been a wave of, of like uh, support and camaraderie and community and stuff and I think that that shouldn't be shadowed by all of the bad that's happened from COVID. Unfortunately, you know, we had to take a little bit of a break here this past year, but um, it's it's been quite an uh, interesting <laughs> dynamic um, over the past 10 years to see how much we've grown. If you like local music and you care about local musicians and local artists being able to make a living, guess what? They work here too. Today was a real treat. Uh, oh, yeah. I've never been as excited to load in to a, <laughs> yeah. to a venue oh, in my that life. Was I was giddy Skipping. hauling the gear in. <laughs> that was ridiculous. Once it's gone, you don't realize how much you miss it, like how much you want to just be stepping on a sticky floor with beer while dancing next to, you know, 200 strangers that love the same band as you. You know, as soon as the doors open and they're like, you can have a show at the high dive, there's going to be a line out the door. There's a great opportunity to not necessarily pick up where we left off, because I think that elides a lot of things we've lost, but to start rebuilding. I just want to make sure that the high dive makes it through this and we're back better than ever, and I think that it's really important. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna keep on trucking and hopefully if everybody does what they're supposed to do we can we can have fun again. <laughs> <laughs>